Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pierre and this is Simple Home Brew. I'm doing a Morgan's Australian Old today. It's a stout and it's going to be a nice one. So guys, we're ready. I've got my Morgan's Australian Old. It's a stout, it's gonna be nice. I have some dextrose I got from my, my local brewer. Uh, it's only a kilogram of dextrose, which is all you need to just ferment. That'll just give it a bit of fermentation. It is recommended in, on the bottle to do that. I have a little bucket. This is gonna be filled up with about two to maybe three liters of hot water. And with that hot water, I'm gonna pop this can in it. And that's what you should do. In the instructions, it actually give, gives you a recommendation to do that. With that, it'll sit in there while I'm getting ready to do everything else, or so getting all my instrument and equipment ready. That way it'll be nice and soft and pourable when I'm ready to put it into the brew bucket, uh, to the fermenter. So under the lid, there's a lid, just a plastic old lid, that gets thrown away. There's a packet of yeast, one packet of yeast. Some people recommend rehydrating this yeast, and I'm gonna do a video in the future on rehydrating. I have one, but it's probably amongst uh, all grain brew that I did. This one, I will do just a rehydration. I'm actually, I actually might do a, um, a day or so of reactivating yeast. So we'll see how that goes. I've never done it before. But on that, but now, all I need to do is put this aside for now, place this into my bucket that no has no hot water in it yet. And because I'm out in my shed, I only have access to power, I don't have access to water. So I'm gonna fill up my kettle, and once I've done that, boil the water, pour it in, I'll come back to you. So the kettle's boiled, just about ready to pour it in. Look, it's about two liters of hot water in here, pure hot water. I'm gonna pour it over this ye old Australian gold. <laughs> I'm just gonna pour it over this like this. Uh, you can do this in your sink at home, inside the kitchen, wherever you are. This will just heat it up enough that I can pour it easier. So that will sit in hot water now for 15, 20 minutes while I'm doing everything else. So we'll leave that at that and it'll be fine. So what I'm gonna do now is take my extract out of my hot water. And the extract already, you can even feel the can soften up. I'll grab the can opener, which is the electric one. I think it's still got a little bit of power in it. And I'll proceed to open the can. So once it's open, I'll show you what I do next. You ready? Look at that. Nice and dark, I have a smell. Oh, it smells like stout, can you believe it? I'll close that off so nothing gets in it for a sec. Oh, I decide what I'm gonna do next. So one of the first things we have to do is open our dextrose bag and dissolve it in hot water. So I'll do that now, Just pull tab. I will spray it with a bit of sanitizer. Just be cautious. Probably not gonna make much difference. But anyway, I'll tear it open, get it ready. Now dextrose is just sugar. Basically it's just a fermentable sugar, as you can see here. As you can see inside the bucket, we have no water, but I'm gonna now pour two liters of boiling water in there. And it's very hot. The bucket can take the heat. Our fermentosaurus cannot. So that's why we do it in the bucket first. Now, of course, hot water, anything above 60 degrees or so, kills bacteria, so we're okay with that. Gonna pour the dextrose in. Now, remember, I always sanitize. So there's no, no shame. Uh, there's no fear of bacteria getting in much at all. So in this bottle, in this bottle is sanitizer. I always keep sanitizer stored. So we'll just dissolve this sugar, dextrose, just to make sure it's all nicely dissolved before I put the extract in. So that'll make it a little bit easier to mix later. Yeah, I know you, some of you have seen my videos before, but I do repeat everything. Uh, it helps those who have never seen my videos. So. I'm here to help everybody who wants to know how to brew all kinds of extract brews and other brews, and this is why I do it. 
So we'll pour our, look at that, look how liquidy that became, just from being in hot water for 15, 20 minutes. So that makes it so much easier to pour out of the can here. Now what I'd normally do if I was inside, I would actually rinse this out with, um, with water as I'm filling my fermenter, but I haven't got tap water here in the shed. So I'm just using what I've got and just working with it. Eventually I might be able to get a plumber down and get some, get some running water into my tent, my shed tent. Let like goodness out of there, eh? Look at that. Look, it doesn't matter if you don't get it all out. I mean, it's probably 10 grams, 10 mil, maybe a bit more of uh, extract that you're missing out on. But it's not going to make a massive difference to the flavour of the brew. If anything, it will just make it a little bit less strong. So that's my extract poured into my hot water. And with this, I'm just going to stir it until I feel like it's, um, because I can't see the bottom at the moment. Oh, it's dissolving. I'm going to stir it until I feel it's dissolved. some information on Camden tablets. And the Camden tablets are used in winemaking. Mostly they use it one to two, maybe three tablets per 20 odd litres or so of wine. In our aspect, we don't do that. We actually use a quarter to half a tablet in beer brewing. So what that means is Camden tablets neutralize chlorine and chloramine, which is in our water supply. Our water supply is treated with these two products, one or the other, or sometimes both. Uh, we can't get rid of it quick. So if you, let's say, do an all-grain all brew, you can boil it out pretty quick within that hour, an hour and a half of boiling. It's gone. But with extract brewing, you kind of need to get rid of it some other way. What Camden tablets do is neutralize chloramine and chlorine and some other chemicals, mainly that, which will remove more of the off flavors and help with a best, better tasting brew. So I hope this information is helpful. Uh, it helped me for sure. I'm looking forward to tasting the brew after I put this one in and see what it tastes like and see and compare it with the last brew I did. It'll be, hopefully it'll be great. So what I've got is my dissolved extract and my dextrose. And with that, I'm just gonna pour it straight in to my fermenter, which has already been set up ready. And I'll just pour it in just like that. Watch the darkness, eh? And now I've aerated that as I'm going in, as, as it's going in, it's getting aerated. I'll just make sure it's mixed. And we don't want to spill any, which I always do, because I'm a grot. That's it, empty. Yes, I know there's precious stuff there, but it's not a big deal. Right, I'm gonna leave it like that just for now and let it settle. Uh, the temperature should be at around about 23 to 24 degrees at the moment, Celsius. Funny enough, it's actually 28 degrees. So I don't know what to do there, <laughs> I just have to wait for a bit. But it's ready to go. So while we're waiting for that, I now have to put my cap on and I'm doing a pressure ferment with this one as well. Um, my caps, these ones here work really well under pressure fermenting, so that's a good thing. The last one for the Firmzilla did not, until I worked out all the kinks. So I've got a sanitized tube, a lift a pickup tube. That goes on the end of my sanitized cap. So it can go on either one of these, uh, in or out, doesn't matter. Uh, you just gotta Notice which one you've done it on when you actually add the butterfly valve. So that's on, nicely done. Put the seal around the base here to make sure it's sealed. And we drop that in. But before we actually do the lid up, we need to add our yeast. So the yeast is open. Smells good actually. Smells rich. 
So the yeast just gets poured straight in. It does say in the instructions to stir it, so I'll do that. Quickly grab my thing, sanitize it again, because it's been sitting on the container, the lid. Just better to be safe than sorry. So get that in there, just give it a quick stir. That'll do. So my yeast is now pitched, it's ready, and it's gonna start fermenting. It doesn't take long. And what I'm doing today, I'm gonna to actually leave it in the shed with its jacket on, because um, I've got too much inside, basically. So I have to pressure test this, make sure that the, um, make sure the fermenter is up to 10, 10 PSI at most, at least. So I'll quickly pop a bit of gas in it, like this. You don't have to know, I've already shown you how to do this, so. So I'll bring that up to 10 PSI. It's a bit over, it's about 10 PSI now. Can't hear any leaks so far. We shall test it by putting a lot of sanitizer around the lid. Nothing coming out. No bubbles, that's awesome. So no leaks, it's what we want, no leaks. We're on a winner. She's solid and sealed. Now I don't need to purge the oxygen out of this, so the, the gas and the oxygen can stay in there because it needs it right now. But later, as it ferments, it will automatically purge its own oxygen out that it doesn't need. So I'll get my trusty little butterfly bowl, pop a little bit of sanitizer in there just so it doesn't get in the brew. Now remember, I've got a tube, a dip tube, and it's connected on this output. So I'm going to put it on the other one. Now that's set at about 10 PSI. So that's the gas side, and that's the serving side. So I'm leaving that at 10 PSI. If I open it, gas comes out. If I close it, it stops. That means that it will always extract. Actually, I might go, no, 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 it's, it's stout. It's got to stay about 10 PSI-ish. So all I need to do now is wrap this beauty up with my fermenter jacket, put it away, and then come back in a few days and see what happens. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.